Hi and welcome to yet another episode of Portex Tech Lightning. In this episode I will talk about authenticating virtual machines using Azure Active Directory. So let's immediately get started and jump into it to see what it's all about. Here we go. As always, we will start with a high-level concept of the technology we were going to talk about. So the first one is virtual machines joined to your Windows Active Directory domain services. Now, this has been a standard way for many, many years to manage your fleet of workstations. One of the powerful options here have been to use, for example, group policies to manage all of them. Secondly, we have Azure AD registered devices. Now, this is mostly for users who bring their own devices. They are then registered in Azure AD, but you are not required to use your corporate account to log in. You can log in with your personal Microsoft account and you can still access the corporate resources. The administrator, they can force certain configurations, such as ensuring that the storage of the device is encrypted. It supports Windows 10 or newer, iOS, Android, and Mac OS. Thirdly, we have Azure AD Joint Devices, which is primarily for organizations who have a cloud-first strategy. The devices are joined to Azure AD and requires you to log in using a corporate account. Devices can also be managed on a security level, such as you can set password policies, encryption, and software installations and updates can be enforced. This setup works both for cloud only, but also for hybrid environments, where you can use single sign-on. A couple of reasons to use this instead of the first option is Windows Active Directory Domain Services, or if you want to manage a group of users and devices using Azure AD only. It can be useful for temporary or seasonal employees. If you want to users to join their devices when they work from home and have limited connectivity to corporate resources. Users primarily need access to Office 365 and other Microsoft SaaS application, then this is also very good. It supports Windows 10 and newer, including Windows 2019 virtual machines running in the Azure cloud. Fourthly, we have hybrid Azure joint devices, which is a mix of the first and the second option. The devices are joined to your Windows Active Directory domain and are also registered in Azure AD. This is useful for, for example, supporting older devices running Windows 7 and 8.1, if you want to use group policy for management, you may have Windows 32 apps, which rely on Active Directory machine authentication. This setup requires your devices to have connectivity to your Windows Active Directory domain controllers. It supports Windows 7, 8.1, Windows 10, and newer along with Windows 2008 server and newer in that version. Awesome. Now let's check what the possibilities are to log into a VM in Azure using Azure AD. It's also possible since very recently to use Linux distributions such as Ubuntu, Debian, CentOS and many more for Azure AD authentication using SSH. However, I will here focus on Windows, but the concepts are very similar between the two. Once you enable virtual machine logins using Azure Active Directory, the device will have to be Azure AD joint. You cannot join it to any other domain or an on-premise or Active Directory domain servicer at the moment of the recording. The feature is supported for Windows 2019 data center and later, Windows 10, 1809 and later. Now, imagine you have enabled this on a VM in Azure. Next step is that you may want to use RDP from your machine and client to connect to this and authenticate. There are some requirements for your client as well. Remote connections to a virtual machine joined to Azure AD is only allowed for Windows 10 or newer PCs that are either Azure AD registered, starting from Windows 10 20H1, Azure AD joined or hybrid Azure AD joined to the same directory as the VM. In addition, there are network requirements for the machine. You need outbound 4 or 3 connections to certain Microsoft endpoints. 
The endpoints that I'm talking about are listed in the article linked in the video description. So let's put up the high-level steps in perspective before we run into a demo. So you need to have a destination VM, Windows 10, Windows 2019 data center or later that you want to connect to. You ensure uh, the VM uh, that you want to connect to has outbound 443 access to, Microsoft, to the Microsoft endpoints. You have to make sure that connecting the source client or at least registered in Azure AD. And there's one big issue here, Azure Bastion is not supported to log in using AD authentication through the portal. You have to use the native RDP client through Azure Bastion to get this to work. In Azure, you enable Azure AD login for the VM. Again, in Azure, that's where you put the RBAC rules on the VM who can access that one. Before starting the demo, let's make sure we have completed the first steps and prerequisites. The virtual machine is available in Azure with outbound access. Now, jumping into the demo, here we can see we have two virtual machines that are already created. We have the destination VM, which is Azure ID joined. This is the machine we want to connect to. Then we have a source machine, which is Azure ID registered. This is where we will use RDP to connect from. During the creation of the destination virtual machine, we actually went into the management tab. Here, we specify the option to log in using Azure AD. The easiest way to do this is during the creation of the virtual machine, but it's also possible to put this setting afterwards by enabling the extension. This is done usually using PowerShell and there are scripts available on the web for this. Awesome. We now have a virtual machine and it's enabled for Azure AD authentication. Next step is to use RBAC to assign who can log into the VM. There are two roles available for this. We have the virtual machine administrator login. Users with this role assigned can log in to the Azure virtual machine with administrator privileges. Then we have the virtual machine user login. Now users with this role assigned can lo also log into the Azure virtual machine and there will be regular user privileges. So keep in mind that an Azure user with the owner or contributor roles assigned for a VM do not automatically have the privileges to log on to the VM over RDP. So you need either of those two roles. On the destination VM, we will add the virtual machine administrator login to our test account. We open up the source machine. For our testing purposes, we RDP from the internet into this one. Now remember, this is not a good practice and only used for testing here. Once logged in, we will open up the RDP session to the destination. Next step is important. The account you authenticate with has to be in this format, Azure AD slash UPN. We click on connect. Connections opens up and we are connected to the VM. And most importantly, we are authenticating using Azure Active Directory. Wow. Having seen this in action, we can summarize what we have learned in this session. The destination VM has to be Azure AD joined using Windows 10, Windows 2019 data center or later. The source VM has to be at least Azure AD registered using, for example, Windows 10 or newer. Azure Bastion is not compatible with Azure AD authentication through the portal. You have to use the native RDP client for this to work. Network ports have to be opened. Our back roles, they also have to be added. It's available for many Linux distribution as well and not only for Windows. That's all I had for this episode. In addition to the interesting technology, you can also actually integrate conditional access policy and multi-factor authentication to all of it. So this opens up many possibilities and option to have an extra layer of security, like an onion. It's quite clear which direction Microsoft is taking. Focus these days are cloud only and phasing out the on-premise Active Directory domain services. 
The future it is, however, exciting, and we will have to see a little bit where it takes us. But one thing I can say is stay tuned next week for another episode of Politics Tech Lightning, where you will learn even more cool stuff. So take care and see you.